All right, so I'm live and I'm not expecting a lot of people here because most people are probably watching the Super Bowl or, uh, you know, just aren't that into what I'm talking about. But hopefully there's some people here that may not see this live, but they'll see this afterwards. I probably should have done this a tape, as a tape video, to be honest with you. <clears throat> Either way, I'm going to go through it. I've got a, uh, actually a pretty good Doctor Who collection. Not, not perfect, nothing like a, God, what's her name? Um, the one that inspired this actually. I was watching some videos on uh, on YouTube and I think it was Lauren, Lauren's collection, something like that, uh, who has like a bunch of Doctor Who stuff. Like, <clears throat> and pretty much I think she's just completed all the William Hartnell and all the Patrick Troughton that are available. And uh, watching her video actually inspired me to make this video here tonight. <clears throat> that and Hey Dave, welcome man. Uh, hope you're a Doctor Who fan. <laughs> uh, this series of Doctor Who, hey Jared, uh, has gotten me back into it again. Last series I was kind of getting out of Doctor Who a bit. Uh, I wasn't really feeling it and uh, the new series has completely changed my thoughts on, on it and has really made me excited about Doctor Who again. And it doesn't hurt that those Blu-ray box sets have been coming out recently. But I'm going to start with the original DVD stuff. I've even got some uh, some box sets here. Some of them are actually signed. I'll uh, go through each one, and uh, I'll just let you know. Basically, I'm not. Uh, we'll talk about the. Uh, we can talk about the. Uh, you know how many episodes are on each one. Your first doctor was Peter Cushing. That's actually pretty cool. Hey, Elvin. I do have some Peter Cushing here. I got to have those two films as well, the Amicus ones. The first time anybody got to see Doctor in color. So let's start off with uh, with this one here. And this is a slim release of uh, Doctor Who the, Be the Beginnings. Let me do something. Hold on a second. I just realized that I have this. Hold on. Apparently, my orientation is locked. So, which sucks because that means the camera's over on this side, which confuses the hell out of me. All right, <laughs> Doctor Who the beginning. So this has the first three Doctor Who serials on here. Uh, four really, it has the kind of part of the fourth one, the one, that, the one that's missing. Um, because one thing you'll know if you've ever started to collect Doctor Who is there's a ton of missing Doctor Who. Hey Alan, welcome. <clears throat> uh, Tom Baker does rule. Uh, GR. I'm a huge Tom Baker fan. <clears throat> so this started out with The Unearthly Child, which is the first episode of Doctor Who, well, the first serial. Uh, Doctor Who in the old series ran in, in like serials. Basically, it uh, could only be, be anywhere from two to six to ten to four episodes. The first one ran four episodes long. That was The Unearthly Child. After that was The Daleks, otherwise known as The Mutants. Uh, that was the first appearance of The Daleks, uh, who the, uh, they weren't actually the uh, creator of Doctor Who didn't want them. But uh, he had to take them, and they became super popular. Uh, then, of course, there's Edge of Destruction. There's this one's two, only two episodes long, and they have like a condensed version of uh, of Marco Polo, which was seven episodes long, but it's been lost. And uh, all they got now is like 30 minutes of audio. So maybe somewhere there's like complete audio for Marco Polo, and they'll eventually do like a a, a blue uh, kind of a maybe a Blu-ray or a DVD release down the road with animated, with you know with it animated. But for now, that's all we got. It is a three disc set. This is the uh, North American release. And there are a, a ton of features on here. Anything from like uh, auto commentaries, pilot outtakes, uh, Dark True Origins is actually really, really good. I recommend checking that one out. So I'm going to put these down here as I go through them. I'll do the box sets last. So you have to stay for the box sets. Next up is the Aztecs. Nice, you ordered, you ordered all the indicator hammer. You're going to be pleased with the hammer sets. They're really, really cool. This is the Aztecs. Uh, it's signed by Carol Ann Ford and uh, Verdi Lambert uh, and uh, William Russell. So if you know who those people are, then uh, congratulations. You're a Doctor Who fan. <laughs> uh, again, it's a great story. Uh, this is the original release. But I, there's a special edition release now, which I probably should upgrade to. I, I don't think I do have it. Uh, but again, like even like regular edition, there's like a ton of features. 
on here. One thing you're going to understand if you've ever started collecting Doctor Who or if you're just starting to get into the classic stuff and you start collecting it, you're going to be like kind of overwhelmed by the amount of features. <laughs> you like the redhead. Oh, you like Karen Gillan, the girl that played uh, Amy. <clears throat> well, they're basically, you know, tin can pepper pot Nazis. Let's go with that's what dialects are. Uh, Asics is a really great story, by the way. Wim Hartnell as a doctor was kind of like a harsher doctor. He was supposed to be the grandfatherly one. He starts out kind of harsh and kind of hard to. Uh, he gets like, as companions goes along, he kind of relates to them. You have all the region. Oh, no, I'm jealous, dude. You have all the region two ones. So this is a North American release uh, of Planet of the Giants. Uh, Costco had some like Doctor Who's about a couple years back. I went in and I picked them all up. They had them like for extremely cheap prices. Over here in North America, Doctor Who uh, DVDs were extremely expensive. It's very hard to get. Uh, like you have to go to the UK to get like decently priced Doctor Who releases and to actually get some of the ones that are uh, actually out of print here in North America. This one here is Planet of the Giants. I actually kind of like this one. Uh, it's kind of cheesy fun, kind of like the old school like giant monster type of thing next up is one of my favorite episodes of the original like William Hartnell run and that is the Keys of Marinus uh, this one is is kind of cool in that it has like six episodes in it um, and although there's an overarching aspect to it oh yeah <laughs> that would be uh, Sylvester McCoy we'll get to him soon he's the one that play, was played in The Hobbit uh, this has, a, although this is an overarching like kind of story arc, uh, these six episodes actually each have their, kind of their own self-contained episode as well, and it really works. It will be the first time we'd see this. This will become more prevalent when we see like seasons of Doctor Who that ran with the story arc uh, later on in the original series, and of course the new series of Doctor Who, all except for uh, the series eleven, always had a, like an overarching kind of story uh, with it in the new in New Who, which is what we call Doctor Who that was that came came out after around 2006 because the original series lasted from the 1960s until 1989 when off the air can't um, on TV came back in, in around in the mid 90s for a TV movie uh, on Fox that kind of like half BBC half uh, North American produced film called Doctor Who the movie starring Paul McGann and uh, would just go off the air again then and not come back on until 2006 when Christopher Eccleston and would, would come on as the doctor and Russell T Davis would bring it back <clears throat> So that is a. Uh... I was wondering if I had this one. I was going to order this actually. Uh, there's oh by the way, if you're in Canada, uh, I'm not sure what's like in uh, Amazon.com, but Amazon CA right now has some of these Doctor Who releases on for like super cheap. And by super cheap, I mean anywhere from like five ninety nine to nine ninety nine for some of the classic DVDs. Uh, stuff like Mind Robbers and uh, Enemy of the World, stuff like that. We got some fans of the Palm Again movie. We'll get to that one actually. I'll give you my thoughts on that. So this is one of the ones with the lost episodes. Uh, and this is the Underwater Menace. I actually really dig this cover. And this is the I'm getting into the Patrick Troughton era now. I think I've gotten all through the uh, do I have that one too? I do. Oh my god, yeah, somebody got it for me. Um This is has the Jamie Mc does this have Jamie McKinnon in it? Uh, Jamie was like uh, the doctor's like companion for like a lot of yeah Fraser Hines. So I got to meet Fraser Hines in person uh, when I lived in uh, in St. John's. I, I actually got his book too, his life story. Uh, really good. Uh, this is one of the newer one newer releases. These episodes were lost. I'm not sure if any of these are animated or not, but uh, I know that the uh, this has some commentary and some like uh, some other features on it. This is one of the newer releases. Well, for me, newer anyway. Next up is one that I was actually going to pick up, but I'm glad I didn't because actually this one was sent to me not that long ago. It's Enemy of the World. Uh, it's one of my favorite uh, Patrick Troughton episodes, the Doctor series, serials of Doctor Who. Uh, I think this one runs four episodes. Is that what I'm going to say, or is it six? Six episodes, uh, <clears throat> and it's a pretty brilliant one. This is kind of neat because Patrick Troughton doesn't only play the Doctor, but he uh, he plays uh, like a bad guy as well and does a really good job in it. 
a new series. The new series, this, this, this series has been great. I, I was iffy on some of the episodes. Hey, Movie Madness. Welcome back. I understand the busyness. We've all been there. <clears throat> Hopefully it's been a good busy, though. I haven't seen tonight's episode of Doctor Who yet. I've, I watched the last episode, which was blew my mind. Hey, Ricky. So next up is... I've probably got some of these out of order, by the way, so I do apologize. The Crotons, which again is another uh, Patrick Trout one. He's the second Doctor. Uh, originally, the Doctor... Well, after Patrick, after William Hartnell couldn't play the Doctor anymore. He's getting older. He was m missing a lot of his lines. What's my favorite era of Doctor Who? Uh, that's actually a good question. Um, although I think it changed, I, it probably because I, when I started watching it, was in in the Tom Baker era, you know, the Hinchcliffe Holmes era. Uh, that's always been a favorite of mine. Though uh, I really also love uh, the uh, John Pertwee's era. And uh, and John uh, and John Pertwee worked with Terrence Stick. So if you watch like Doctor Who now, like the new show, uh, the guy that's that's running the show now, Chris Chibnall, uh, his Doctor Who was very strongly, heavily influenced by the John Pertwee era of Doctor Who. So uh, I'm kind of digging that. I'm kind of grooving on that, uh, and you can see it like between. Uh, Proton. So this is the Patrick Trout. I, I love Patrick Trouton too, but John Pertwee, like uh, Tom Baker, they've been kind of not really. I mean, you can start in the two thousand six, like if you want to start in the new stuff. That's okay, dude. This is a this is a good way to start, <clears throat> and I'll give you some places we can start on too as we go through this. Oh yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, you can start in the newer Who without even like going back to the classic stuff. But if you do go back to the classic stuff, you're going to find it a bit more fulfilling when you're watching some of the newer stuff and like somebody like the Master or the or the Silurians or like kind of like uh, get into come into the uh, picture. But there's actually like box sets and stuff of those characters that you can get so that you don't need to go back through like years of that. And the thing like Dark True originally, although it changes. Um, a lot of the stories aren't like completely. So people talk about like the lore of Doctor Who. Doctor Who is one of those shows that's not that mixes its lore up a lot. You know, it just kind of it shakes it up a bit uh, every few years. Uh, re it was not regeneration at first, by the way. It was rejuvenation. And originally, when they mentioned the first Doctor turning to the second, now basically what happens in Doctor Who, the trope is like that rather than have just another actor come in and take over the role. And act like that other actor. The what they do in Doctor Who is the Doctor dies, and he uh, turns into another person. And that person has his own like thoughts and feelings, and uh, emotions, and will not act or dress like the other Doctor. So one of the most exciting things about Doctor Who is as when one Doctor goes and another Doctor comes in, and it's almost like a completely different show. Uh, you know, it's got the same feel to it, but it's got a completely different show because it's new. You have new an a new actor bring his take on the Doctor, or her take actually right now. Uh, which uh, we'll get into after a while. It is because it's one of those concepts where basically, you know, with any other show, having to recast like a lead role like that could kill, could kill a show. But it's one of the most ingenious concepts. I wish I thought it up because um, now they can take any actor. It doesn't matter like. Well, one, it's an alien from a planet called Gallifrey. So it doesn't matter the sex, it doesn't matter the race, anything like that. Uh, it can be anyone. Uh, that was, I guess, first. And they only have, you know, and I mean, like, they can be blue color. It can be a blue colored skin doctor. Uh, <laughs> it, it acts because, uh, and that actually, uh, if you want to, uh, like, people like mention that as well. Um, I'd say uh, check out Destiny of the Daleks because people like uh, argue about Doctor Who and like, oh, Doctor Who can't change sex or can't change color or anything like that. Uh, yeah, you might want to go back to the original Doctor Who and uh, the guy plays Curly. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, he does. Uh, that's uh, Actually, it was from Mad TV, I think, that, uh, that actor. I think it's Will Sasso that you're talking about. I, I think I'm correct. Next up, this is the last one for Patrick Troughton. It was a 10-episode one, pretty long, but actually not a bad one. War Games actually runs, I think, three discs, right? Yeah, this is actually a three-disc set. Uh, 
Uh, Troughton did a really good job as a doctor, where William Hartnell was like stern and eventually grandfatherly. Patrick Troughton was much more animated. He was younger. He had kind of like the the Beatles style haircut, and um, he could seem like he was being cowardly, but he was very, very actually not. He was just very, uh, very clever. Uh, you guys are going to get like this a lot more to get into the box sets. Trust me. So let's get into the uh, the third doctor here. Uh, one of my favorites, John Pertwee. He's more of an action-oriented doctor. Um, John Pertwee is when Doctor Who started going in color. The first two ones that I told you, all those ones I showed you are black and white. Now, in order to do color uh, back then, it was, it was more expensive. So one of the things that they did right away was they grounded the Doctor on Earth and, uh, and had him like, work with unit. And then the, so to do that, Sunrise is awesome, Dave. I love Sunrise. I will get to uh, <laughs> to the to the movie. Don't worry. In order to do that, they actually like the the ground them. They introduced like you, inter, unit was introduced before, but then became like a, a big part of the show. And uh, we got to see the master introduced for the first time, played by Roger Delgado, um, who would be like a, he was a renegade time lord. Uh, see, it wasn't until the late second Doctor Who that we actually talked about actually heard about the uh, the Time Lords. Actually, the second Doctor's regeneration is, is a forced regeneration. So some people are iffy on how that counts. And some people think like there's a twist recently in Doctor Who, kind of a big shocker in a recent episode, that makes people wonder if maybe the Doctor that the that Jodie Whitnell, Jodie Whittaker, saw might actually be the Doctor kind of between uh, Patrick Troughton and when John Pertwee finally lands. Because we know from the audio stories, because aside from these DVDs here, there is a company called Big Finish. And, they, and when Doctor Who was in what we call the wilderness years, basically when it wasn't on TV, uh, there was a lot of like Doctor Who audio adventures going on with a lot of different like people playing the Doctor that, you know, played in the, uh, in the TV series. So what they did was they did a bunch of like adventures were kind of like outside of the timeline with where Patrick Troughton kind of did stuff for the uh, Time Lords before he turned into John Pertwee. It's all bit of kind of like wibbly wammy timey wammy stuff. Uh, if you're watching Doctor Who, understand this. Don't think linear. Just don't think linear. Uh, the Damons, one of my very favorite episodes with uh, John Pertwee. Roger, Roger Degato is a master right there. This is a special edition. Oh yeah, they did. That's what John Pertwee, and it was some of the best episodes. Um, they, they introduced the Atons, they introduced the Master. Um, and when he did get, you know, kind of go off planet, when he did get, get into the TARDIS again, he, he went to see the Santarans for the first time. Um, so some great stuff there. So this is the Damons. If you've never seen this one, this is a really, really good episode of Doctor Who. Uh, it's got some great stuff on here. Uh, some amazing features. One of these times I'm going to kind of deep dive into some of the features because there's some really neat stuff on Doctor Who DVDs that like you just wouldn't see anywhere else on any other DVD or any other TV series. To be honest with you. Next up is the uh, Claws of Axis. And that's nine more than I expected tonight. <laughs> it's okay with only nine people. And uh, this is actually a really good story. Uh, kind of these creatures kind of creep me out back in the day. Uh, it's the, the Katie Manning run. She was, I guess, the first kind of like young, I guess, it's kind of sex symbol type thing for Doctor Who. Next up are Death to the Daleks. Any Dalek episode, you know, I got, kind of got to have it. Although they're not my favorite monsters, Cybermen are. There's a lot of Cybermen ones I don't have, though. There's Day of the Daleks. Again, really good episode. And oh, are we already into? Uh, yes, we are into Tom Baker. You're going to see a lot more Tom Baker than the, a lot of the other Doctors, just because I, you know, that's the one that I kind of grew up with. This is the Mass Amandragora. I probably pronounced that wrong. Uh, it's the. This was the original edition. There's a special edition. I think of this one out now. But I'll have this one coming in the new Doctor Who box today, anyway, the Blu-ray one. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what what releases they have on there. Now, there's been a couple things that in the new Blu-ray sets 
uh, that couldn't get ported over from the DVDs. So always, I always say keep your original Doctor Who DVDs because there may be features on those DVDs that aren't included on the, uh, on the new Blu-ray sets. So, you know, just a uh, heads up. That is Tom Baker. This is the guy that most people think about when you, when you hear the name Doctor Who. Uh, most people would think of like Tom Baker and his uh, lots of teeth and long scarf. Oh, people are always going to be like that, you know. But I, the way I see it, some people are just like complain JR. <laughs> and some people just aren't going to get it. Uh, Pyramids of Mars. Is there one episode on those? Oh, like, no, normally uh, Movie Madness, uh, it can be a bit confusing. Uh, a series like they'll have the, f the full story right so pyramids of mars for instance runs i think it's four uh, i'm going to say four episodes so the way that it would work was the original series would have four episodes and each of these episodes would have a cliffhanger at the end of the episode uh and you know here and sometimes here in north america what they would do back then was they'd show them on pbs and they'd show them uh like all together kind of either put all four episodes together in the middle of the night or sometimes when it was a bigger one, they'd truncate it and do an omnibus version of it where they'd make almost a movie. So they'd kind of like edit it down to a movie length version. Those are harder to find now. And actually kind of, there were some that used to be on VHS <clears throat> and there are ones that people look for a lot actually. Pyramids of Mars is a really good one though. Uh, it has some of the best lines, uh, some of the best, like one of the best villains ever in Doctor Who. Only, I don't think Sutek ever came back. Uh, who knows? Sutek, maybe. Maybe we can get him, see him back one of these days. Uh, Sutek was a villain that... Uh, <laughs> that's okay, Movie Madness. Ask as many questions as you want. I actually like that. Uh, Sutek is a villain that actually really took the Doctor to the limit. Um, and uh, you actually see the Doctor in peril. Uh, one of my favorites is Horror of Fang Rock. This is during the Hinchcliffe Holmes era. Hinchcliffe Holmes era. Now, for people that don't watch Doctor Who, uh, Hinchcliffe and Holmes isn't going to mean anything to you. John Hurt was the War Doctor. We'll get to him too. That's in the newer stuff. Uh, now, Hinchcliffe, Hinch, Philip Hinchcliffe was the uh, was the producer of Doctor Who, and Robert Holmes was one was one of the main writers on Doctor Who during this series, uh, during this time. Tom Baker was uh, portrayed the Doctor and. Hinchcliffe and Holmes were really big Hammer horror fans. So they tried to put as much horror aspects into the, the Doctor as possible. Horror of Fang Rock. Is, remember, the, if you've watched New Doctor and you've seen that, uh, that, that you know, the thing, you know, Chris Ferguson, today, just today, everybody lives. Everybody dies <laughs> in Horror of Fang Rock. Everybody freaking dies. Uh, this is a more horror-oriented one. And anything during the Hinchcliffe Holmes time does tend to have more of a Hammer horror, Gothic horror type of feel to it. Um, and this this is no, no like no exception. Next up is the uh, the Leisure Hive, and I'll be honest, I don't remember this one that well. Uh, that 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 is the truth of the matter. <clears throat> it's been a long time since I've since, le since I've seen the Leisure Hive, but I uh, I do kind of remember liking. I think this is when J and T came in. John Nathan Turner, sorry. Jonathan, basically, Doctor Who can be like summed up in the classic series by its showrunner. And uh, you're going to, if you go in and you like Pyramids of Mars or something like that, that's Tom Baker. He's, he's usually the favorite. He played him for the longest movie, man. He played Doctor Who for seven years. So that's seven series of Doctor Who that he played him for. So needless to say, for a lot of people, gr like kids growing up around that time period, <clears throat> he would be the doctor that that most people would remember and have the most fond memories of. To this, that like in the new Doctor, Who, David Tennant is usually the kind of the measuring stick that other doctors are measured by. <clears throat> I remember Doctor like peanut butter and chocolate. It is actually Jar. Um, but uh, for the original Doctor, Who, the measuring stick was Tom Baker. And. For the longest time, this was considered the greatest Doctor Who story ever made. And a lot of people start here if, they're a bit, if they want to know about the Daleks. Because this gives you a six-part episode. It gives you one of the best written episodes of Doctor Who. 
It's during the Hinchcliffe Holmes era. It has Tom Baker starring as Doctor Who. It has the Daleks, which are his most famous enemies. It has the introduction of Davros, and it's one of the best written stories uh, altogether. <clears throat> oh no, there's not a complete series box out of Doctor Who. There was a lot, that, that show ran from the 60s to 1989, so uh, they're doing them by uh, series, uh, and I'll, I'll get into that a little bit later. This is Gents of the Daleks. It is one of the great stories of Doctor Who. It may seem a little bit slower now compared to like the, the faster pace of the more modern Doctor Who, but uh, still, this is well written, well done, and I really strongly recommend it. There's features on that one there that aren't in my, that isn't in my Blu-ray set that I got of the, uh, of the uh, same one there. There's like a, uh, what is it? There's two discs. So this one is the two discs one. And there's like a Genesis of a Classic, which I think is on there. But there's something called the Dalek Tapes, which talks about like the, uh, the Daleks and, uh, and, you know, Terry Nation is like creation of the Daleks and like exactly how that goes. But uh, he, uh, it's not on the new Blu ray edition. It couldn't get poured over. So, this is A Hand of Fear. This is the last episode with Sarah Jane. Uh, Sarah Jane is the most famous companion, like with Doctor Who. Uh, she was played by Elizabeth Sladen, and for uh, people that, like, say they're young, they got like younger kids or something. They may know the Sarah Jane Adventures, which is a series that ran on the BBC for a while, and it was aimed towards, more towards a younger audience. And it was very popular, and unfortunately she passed away. It was the only reason that the show went off the air, to be honest with you. Or I think it would still be on right now. My personal favorite episode of Classic Doctor Who is The Deadly Assassin. This is the only episode where the Doctor doesn't have a companion uh, in the entirety of the Classic Doctor Who series. I'm not joking. This is the only, literally the only one with no companion at all. We get to see him go back to Gallifrey, and we really get to see Gallifrey. We get to see a new version of the Master who is... Um, you mightn't find him, but for me, when I was a kid, I found uh, that face pretty freaking horrifying. <laughs> and uh, gave me some nightmare fuel. So this, is prob this was the first one I bought from the UK, by the way. Uh, I love The Deadly Assassin. It is one of the greatest of all. And it is coming out on Blu-ray very, very soon, so good to know. And I'll get into that as well, by the way. The Fifth Doctor. Let's start off this special. So Fifth Doctor was played by Peter Davison at the time as the youngest person to play the Doctor. And because of that, they put three people in the TARDIS with them. Uh, they would do that again later on. Um, but uh, this is The Five Doctors. This was a special that was done. Uh, that had uh, the five doctors in it. So basically, it, had, uh, it sort of did. So Tom Baker didn't want to come back. There were some like money issues, and I think he wanted to be more center stage type of thing because he feels still, he has ownership to the doctor. He feels ownership, I think. Uh, so basically, they used. Are all, the re are all of these recent stories included in the Tom Baker set? I'll get to those. Don't worry. I'll, I'll explain those too because I have the Tom Baker set set right now. And I'll explain those when I get to them. So stay around. <clears throat> so this has Peter Davison. It has a clip of Tom Baker from a, an episode that wasn't fin finished called Shout Out. It has uh, John Pertwee, Patrick Troughton, and since William Hartnell had passed away by this point, our rich actor Richard Herdnell uh, was used to, uh, to take over the role of the first Doctor. And it actually, this is a really cool one. What's the super cool bit of this one, if you've, if you've got this edition of it, is there is a hidden audio commentary on here that's done by David Tennant. So that's an Easter egg. If you got this one and you never, never checked it out, there's a, David, there's a hidden David Tennant commentary because he's a huge fan of Peter Davison. And worked it well for him because Peter Davison's now his father-in-law. He married Peter Davison's daughter. Um, all right, so next up is a, uh, uh, yeah. The, the guy that played the doctor, the 10th doctor, married the daughter of the guy that played the fifth doctor. And on the series, she played the doctor's daughter. It's confusing. Uh, the Awakening. It was a two-episode uh, serial. You can see 1984, 1985. Uh, Peter Davison. Again, this is with the uh, Janet Fielding. I think this is uh, yeah, Mark Strickson's in it by then. So, uh, you know, Tegan and Turlo are, are the companions by this point. Next up is The King's Demons. That was another, like, shorter one. I bought, like, The Awakening and the King's Demons at around the same time. They're both two episode ones. 
So they were actually, hey, welcome. <laughs> nice. You picked up some MVD Rewind Collection. I'm super stoked to hear about that. My dad actually picked up his, his first one recently. And he, and he texted me right away. Yeah, back then, Alan, they didn't think that, the, that there was going to be anything like, like DVD or even VHS or any of that type of stuff. So often what they would do for a series is they would like, they'd keep the show for so long and they'd sell rights, sell, you know, rights to the shows to other countries. Um, and they'd usually get those tapes back. Sometimes they wouldn't. That's why we found lost episodes over the years. And often they would just tape over those episodes. So a lot, there's a lot of Doctor Who in between the first and second Doctor that are missing. And uh, there's even a couple in the third Doctor that were only in black and white and you had to go in and recolorize them. But uh, luckily, uh, fans over the years that have been watching the show had been taping the series right from the beginning. So, like the audio of it anyway. So they're able to go back and use the original audio from Doctor Who and, uh, and actually animate them and do like animated versions. Like have their live action episodes and then go to an animated episode. Uh, eventually, they should, you know, do them all. Hopefully, <clears throat> this is the uh, the mark of the Rani, and uh, who signed this one? I think it's Nicola Bryant, who plays Perry, per who was a. Uh, oh, we're into the sixth Doctor, right? Okay, yeah, we're into the sixth Doctor. <clears throat> uh, and it's the only one I have of the Six Doctor on, in Solo. But don't worry, I have lots more at Six Doctor. Uh, he didn't stay for very long. I'll mention that later if you guys want to talk about it. But there's also another Rani one, and that's the first one with Sylvester McCall. You played the Seventh Doctor. And Sylvester McCall, you know, some of you guys are going to remember him when you look at him because he was in the Hobbit films. Uh, and this is the time in the Rani. And Rani is played by Kate O'Mara. Uh, if you're older and you watch shows like Dynasty or something like that, you probably saw her. In, uh, in that series, she acted in, I'm not sure if it's the Colby's, probably the Colby's actually, Colby's or Dynasty, one of those shows. And this was like the first serial series of like a... Uh, it was popular, just like, honestly, being geeky wasn't popular like growing up anywhere. Uh, Doctor Who became more popular when in 2006, when the new series started. Uh, its popularity went, went insane from Chris Rickson to David Tennant. David Tennant and Matt Smith years, uh, like the earlier, especially Matt Smith, were, were, were insanely popular. And its, its ratings now are still are better than like some of the later era stuff, like the Peter Capaldi, some of the Peter, Peter Capaldi stuff, which is a shame because Capaldi's really good. But uh, the thing is right now, people are watching it differently. Uh, so only so many people are watching it on TV. There's also like, you know, there's the uh, people who watch it afterwards. They'll tape it, they'll, they, you know, they'll, uh, there's, uh, there's players to watch it on as well. Paradise Towers uh, is the uh, other single Sylvester McCoy one I got. Now let's get into uh, some of my other stuff. Like, this is when it gets into the good stuff. This is the box sets and stuff. So I'll show you the more recent box sets and stuff first, then I'll go back to the classic box sets because I find that's the easiest way to do it. A good way to get a start in Doctor Who. Uh, they did a series during a... Sylvester so McCoy does have like similarities to the second Doctor. Uh, Andrew Cartmel's idea for Doctor Who I thought was brilliant, but unfortunately it didn't get the play out. Andrew Cartmel was the last showrunner of Doctor Who, and he had planned a very big, like, serious plan. So what they did during their anniversary years of Doctor Who is they did something called the Doctors Revisited, where they did like uh, run a 40-minute, 45-minute long like like overview of each Doctor, and. Uh, Sometimes went a little bit shorter, sometimes went a little bit longer. And right afterwards, they'd pick a, a series that they thought was really kind of reminiscent of the best of that Doctor. So this is Doctor's Visit set f number one. Uh, there's four discs on the set. Uh, and it has, uh, for William Hartnell, they chose the Aztecs as, the, as one of his best episodes. For Patrick Troughton, they chose Tomb of the Cybermen, which I agree is definitely one of his best episodes. Uh, for John Pertwee, they chose Spirit from Space. I uh, wouldn't consider it his best episode, but still a decent episode. And for Tom Baker, they chose the excellent Pyramids of Mars. I'll show you kind of what these look like on the inside. And he, there's like one for each doctor. It's his own disc and each art, own artwork. 
which is neat because a lot of the BBC, uh, um, our BBC, BBC America, is not as good. The releases aren't like as well done as the uh, as the others, Doctor. Who. Then they put out the second one, Doctor Who Revisited Number Two. This one has uh, Peter Davison, Colin Baker, uh, Sylvester McCoy, and Paul McGann, who played him in the film and would later play him again during uh, the uh, anniversary year. Uh, the ch ones they chose were for Peter Davison, they chose Earthshock. If you've never seen it, that's a good one. It's a shocking one. It's got Cybermen. For the sixth Doctor, they picked Vengeance on Veros, which is one of his best episodes. Uh, for the seventh Doctor, Remembrance of the Daleks, which is incredible. And Doctor Who, Paul McGann, the movie. That's all they had to choose from. And uh, this happened here. Originally, these had like uh, magnets in them. But I uh, don't know. I don't think I got the magnets anymore because we moved since then. I think the magnets were probably still in the fridge of the last place that I lived. A refrigerator. Somebody mentioned that Peter Cushing was their first Doctor Who. So these are the Peter Cushing Doctor Who uh, films. There were two films. This is the Dalek collection. Uh, Daleks were created by Terry Nation. And he, uh, he definitely tried to afterwards to spin them off and do their own thing. Made their own, he tried to do their own Dalek series, a bunch of stuff. None of that ever worked. But uh, these were two films. This was the first. Remember, Doctor Who was done in black and white back then. So to see the Doctor on the big theater screen in, in color for the first time was pretty amazing. Uh, they did a lot of take a lot of liberties with it, including having the Doctor who played by Peter Cushing as opposed to Wim Harton who played him in the TV series, making the Doctor human, uh, which he clearly isn't in the TV series, uh, but he is human in this one, and making the TARDIS something he invented rather than something that he stole from his own planet, like the TV series did. There is some great features on here. There is a feature on commentary. And there's a 57 minute uh, thing called Dalek Mania, which is an excellent overview of the of the Dalek. Because uh, Daleks were real for a while were really really big, and anybody that grew up with Doctor Who before I was born, like in the 60s and stuff, stuff they know how important how big the Daleks were. Oh, it, it we're we're just getting to, so uh, here are a few like of the other kind of like I'm going to get into the classic one soon, but uh, recently they put out Daleks collection. And this, has, this, you know, some of the best Dalek stories from the new series, and one, and a couple, and one story from the original series. So they used the Ninth Doctor Dalek episode. Uh, actually, no, it didn't. Not at all. Uh, it didn't. The magnets didn't mess it up at all. You think it would, but it didn't. But it was like packaged and stuff too. So the uh, first one they choose is the Ninth Doctor episode Dalek, which actually is a uh, is a redo of a Big Finish audio. Uh, really, you should go back, man, because there's some great stuff. Especially the later so Vesh McCoy stuff is really good. Uh, then there's uh, Tenth Doctor with Stolen Earth, Journey's End. Eleventh Doctor is Matt Smith's Asylum of the Daleks. Twelfth Doctor Peter Capaldi's Into the Dalek. And they've got the classic Genesis of Dalek. I told you that was an important one. And Dalek Origins, which is a uh, kind of a, a little documentary. So you get to see like all the new Doctor's Dalek episodes on here. Now, not wanting to do just today, I actually want to get the other classic Doctors on there. They did this one here, Cybermen. And in this, this one, we got Army of Ghosts, Doomsday, which is uh, David Tennant, Doctor, Doctor Ones. We got the 11th Doctor, Matt Smith, with Closing Time and Nightmare in Silver. And the 12th Doctor's Excellent Dark Water and Death in Heaven episodes. And these are the newer Cybermen. I like the older Cybermen, but some people prefer this newer, kind of leaner look. This one here has all of the 11th, 12th, 10th, 11th, and 12th Christmas specials because one of the big things for Doctor Who sent when it came back on was to do a Christmas special. Now they do usually do a New Year's special. Um, and I can see why because sometimes when you're watching the Doctor, the wardrobe, the witch in the wardrobe, exactly before the Borg, there was the Cybermen. The Borg are really just the Daleks and the Cybermen combined. That's, that's really all they are. But again, this, uh, this we get to see like there's Tenet. And there's Matt Smith, who my uh, better half adores. A lot of people adore Matt Smith. He's like the, he was a good looking doctor. And there is Peter Capaldi, which is the one that I can kind of relate to the most in the new series, probably because he's older like me. I think, Alan, I think the DVD, the Doctor Who one is out of print, but I, I think like it was recently put out on Blu-ray as well. So you might be able to find it that way uh, if you're looking for the, the, the Peter Cushing at once. I think they put out a Blu-ray edition of it later. Recently, I picked these up as well before I get into my classic ones. Uh, <clears throat> I had all of the Matt Smith stuff on Blu-ray, and I, I should have brought that downstairs. 
Um, I got all of the from Eccleston and Matt Smith on Blu-ray. <laughs> uh, but I did, I saw this one for very cheap at a, uh, at a flea market and I picked it up. This is uh, a complete DVD collection of uh, Dr. Who's Matt Smith. And for those who are huge fans of Karen Gillum, uh, there she is right there. That's Amy, the girl that you guys love so much. This is every single episode of the Matt Smith era of Doctor Who, including the Christmas specials and the anniversary special. And who came after Matt Smith? Well, the great Peter Capaldi. And uh, you guys know, uh, like him, I have his coat. And uh, when I was in Morocco, I, I wore that coat, actually. It was, it's a very functional coat. Uh, Abbey shot, unfortunately, don't have the rights to Doctor Who anymore, but they did uh, like Doctor Who coats for years and they didn't make coats just that for cosplaying they made coats that you could that were functionally able to wear uh in uh in weather and uh whether it's cold weather or hot weather like uh which is really good and i really really love that coat it's uh something that i'm so anyway this is one of his coats uh but this is the peter capaldi era so here we go we're getting into the early doctor who stuff and i don't exactly know where to start so let's start with the I'm not sure if it's a Blu-ray DVD combo pack the Peter Cushing one or not. I don't have it. I've only got that, uh, that DVD one. It's got it in print. So I showed you before the beginning box set. Well, I also have the original box set for the beginning, which was like a, uh, a bigger set before it went into a slimline one. I was uh, on Kijiji. There's this guy that was selling some, some movies. I got there, and I saw this one kind of like pushed back to the side. I said, do you want to sell this one too? He did. And uh, I got it, so I wanted this, both versions of that. Uh, and uh, very cool. So this one you've already seen, sort of, so I'm not going to spend much time on that one. Next up is Lost in Time. Now, Lost in Time, remember when we talked about the fact that doc, a lot of Doctor episodes were lost? Uh, like a lot of the series is had, like, were incomplete? Because, you know, it, they could run from like 10 episodes, 7 or 6 or 10 episodes, and 4 or 5 episodes of those David Tennant would be the best, what is one considered one of the best of the new uh, Doctor Who's, like, definitely. And his, some, his stories, uh, Series 3 especially, oh my God. Uh, yes, uh, $25 for David Tennant's on um, Blu-ray, and I'm guessing it's got special features as well. Uh, yeah, if, if you want to start, you grab it. That's, that's one. I can honestly say, if you're going to like it at all, David Tennant would get you into it. Because he's a good combination of the new Doctor Who and still having throwbacks to the, to the original series without making you feel like you're lost. Uh, you can easily start with David Tennant's series of Doctor Who and go from there. Uh, you'll go back afterwards and, and get the other stuff, trust me. But the Tennant era, for some people, the Tennant era is considered like the glory era. Oh yeah, then it's definitely the... all. all. So you're going to get the, the, the all these series, his specials that he did, and all the Christmas specials. Uh, First couple episodes, first episode starts, is kind of mad, but he really becomes the Doctor. David Tennant is, for this era of Doctor Who, for people that just started, re started watching Doctor Who in 2006, he's the Tom Baker of this era, and he, he'll go like that for a while. You're going to see meet everyone with David Tennant. You're going to see Sarah Jane come back. I won't tell you too much, but trust me, there's a lot of really cool stuff. This is going to be, what, a lesbian Doctor Who? Uh, doctor Who doesn't have sexuality, whether it's the male Doctor or, uh, or a female Doctor. The sex is not a thing. It's not a huge thing on the, in, in the TARDIS. <clears throat> and since we've seen Chris Eccleston kiss Captain Jack Harkness, I think, I think it doesn't matter. This is the last in time. So this is the, the, the episodes from the missing serials. <clears throat> so basically, the way that it worked is it had the, the Wim Hartnell ones and uh, it had stuff like from, uh, from different episodes. And like, there's big actors in these as well, you know, like Julian Glover's in this, Michael Goff is in this, Gene Marsh is in, a, is in this one here. This has like episodes from The Crusade, Daleks Master Plan, Celestial Time Maker. A lot of those are, are, got, are missing now. Uh, this one here is the is a two disc one, and it's uh, Patrick Troughton's uh, lot lost episodes. Basically, the episodes that 
of series that were lost and they include ones from the underwater menace and you know that one's complete now we got that one uh the moon base the faceless ones evil of the daleks the abominable snowman the enemy of the world which is now complete they found that one out the web of fear wheel in space and the space pirates so this is a great set by the way just to get like some some early classic stuff the other classic one i got is this one right here the space museum and the chase uh kind of silly fun episodes that i really enjoy it's the william hartnell stuff uh the chase was originally supposed to have the beatles in it actually but the and they wanted to do it but they're but their uh their manager wouldn't let them do it because they were Doc true fans um but uh really really cool kind of just fun episodes okay where do we start with this we'll do the, we'll do these the best Doc true box sets from the from the classic stuff that ever came out of my in my not so humble opinion were the revisitation sets they gave people a chance to like really look at some of the best stuff from the classic era of doctor who um i'm not sure if these are in print now do i have an android tv box oh i don't actually <laughs> um i know a lot of people do but it's never been my thing obviously i got a lot of physical media so it's <laughs> um but this is doctor revisitations it's a seven to set and it has Talons of Wing Chang, which is one of the greatest episodes of Doctor Who. Uh, the Caves of Androzani, which is another fantastic one. It's, one is Tom Baker, one is Patrick Trout, and it has the movie one on here as well. Uh, I'm pretty sure most of these are multi disc sets. Uh, yeah, two to set for uh, Doctor Who the movie, a two to set for Caves of Androzani, I think, and a three to set for. Uh, for towns of Wang Chang, which I'm probably am pronouncing wrong. That's Revisitations, Volume One, some of the best stuff. They put it with three of these volumes before they just putting it special editions on their own because they figured it was they make more money that way. So this is Revisitations Two. It's got Seeds of Death, Carnivals of Monsters, and Resurrection of the Daleks. So you got one from the Patrick Troughton era, one from the John Pertwee era, and one from the uh, Peter Davison era. Um, Resurrection of the Alex is actually pretty good. I really like that one. I think that's the one where, uh, where Tegan basically says the line that became famous for Clayton Classic Doctor Who, where she leaves the show and basically she tells the Doctor, it's just not fun anymore. And uh, you have to see the show. It's a big line. The third resuscitation set had some of the best episodes. Uh, one of these is going to be in the new box set that's coming out in, uh, in May. And that is the we've got Tomb of the Cybermen, which is uh, which is Patrick Troughton I mentioned before, uh, Three Doctors, which is actually John Pertwee. Well, the uh, though if you're getting the John, the David Tennant one, that's that, I think that is a U.S. release, so that one will. Uh, some of these here won't. Some of the some of these here will. Like uh, it's a, DVDs are easier to play to find to play. I mean, if you got a computer with a DVD drive, <laughs> you can just put it in there. Um, because that's the cool thing like blu-rays are harder you, you know you got to find a blu-ray region free player and you know you gotta you gotta make sure that it like plays region dvds is usually the way on most blu-ray or dvd players if you google it there are there is actually a set Alan, of like a doctor Who cartoon films that were done um i don't have it but there is a set robe to death is actually one of my favorites i love this uh almost like a miss Roboto type of look right pre before miss Roboto came out though so maybe they took Miss Roboto from this, guys. No word of a lie, I literally have the Miss Roboto song stuck in my head right now. So those are revisitation sets. Those are really good. Those are region locked, but they are DVDs, and usually DVDs are easier to get around than, uh, than Blu-rays. Uh, Google your, uh, your player, and there's probably a way to unlock the region when it comes to DVDs. So I'm not going to do the rest of these here in any particular order. Then I'm eventually going to get to the Blu-ray ones. I'm going to explain to you, like how to collect classic Doctor Who easier, <clears throat> and how they made it a lot easier for us. So Dalek War is the uh, the John Pertwee era. It has Frontiers in Space and Plan the Daleks. You'll see the last episode of Roger Delgado. Roger Delgado played the Master. He was the first person to play the Master. Uh, now the thing with uh, 
the sad part was that Roger Delgado was going to film like uh, like kind of his finale and actually do have a definitive ending for his character, uh, but he died in a car accident uh, and did not get to finish it. So uh, they you know kind of finished his character off off screen and they would bring him back later on actually with another actor, or with many different actors actually. The Master is one of those characters that is gloriously loved actually, but the Dalek Wars was really good. And uh, I definitely recommend checking that one out. Next up, there's the Cybermen. This is the older Cybermen. I know a lot of people are going to find these like cheese looking as compared to those really cool looking Cybermen that I showed you before. But remember, these are the Cybermen that I grew up with. So uh, they're the ones that I, I kind of dig. If you're like, if you're born in the 6 or something like that, you probably like the Mendozian Cybermen the best. Uh, but uh, this has two uh, Cybermen stories on it. There was the Silver Nemesis, which was the... Uh, there was the 25th anniversary episode, I think, or 20th anniversary episode, and Revenge of the Cybermen. Uh, neither one are known for being like ex extremely great, <laughs> but that is uh, one of the big things. But this one is, I'm sure you better pick out the name on there if you're a Doctor Who fan at all. Yep, that that's in silver writing, and that is Tom Baker, the the great Doctor, uh, or many people consider the best. That's his autograph. Whew. Wow, myths and legends. Again, we get like uh, uh, two John, two Tom, Tom Baker episodes, and a uh, and a John Pertwee one. Uh, they, some more of the like when these myths. They got like the Time Monster, which is the first Centauran episode. Uh, we've got Underworld on here, and the Norms of Niman, uh, which is just a cool box set with the uh, kind of randomly put together. To be honest with you, and there's the Black Guardian trilogy, which is. Pretty cool. That's when they introduced Turlo. Hey, Brian, welcome, dude. So there's Terminus, Enlightenment, and Modern Undead. So basically what happens here is Turlo becomes one of the companions. The doctor always has companions with him. Um, and what the Doctor doesn't know is that the Black Guardian is kind of blackmailing Turlo to try to kill the Doctor. Uh, it's actually a really cool storyline. Uh, So, one of the things that more recent re Doctor Who has been has been like uh, like I, you get complaints about from people that don't watch a lot of Doctor Who. Is that they say, well, you know, it's there's too much like uh, you know, there's too much stuff in here about like uh, about modern day things like like environment or ecology or stuff like that. Well, that's science fiction. That's how science fiction works. And anytime they say, well, Doctor Who doesn't work like that, I'm say one, you obviously don't watch Doctor Who. Or it just goes above your head, or <laughs> or uh, you've never seen any of the John Perrier. The Paladin Tales is uh, is a really good example of that. It's got the, the Curse of Paladin and the Monster of Paladin, and uh, these are actually some pretty good episodes. Some of the the better like John Perrier ones. Now this is Man Mannequin Mania, and uh, do I have any autographs on this one? I think I do. That's a Katie Manning autograph. I don't think I have any on Spirit and Space. So I got like a few different ones of these. So this is Tear the Atons and Spirit and Space. This deals with the Atons. Uh, the Atons are like they're they're made out of kind of like they're plastic creatures. If you ever saw the original Christopher Eccleston Doctor, they're the villains in the very first episode in the 26, 2006 uh, series. Doctor Who had a uh, for a while during the fourth uh, Doctor had like this robot dog companion because it was kind of the thing to have robots and shows at the time uh this so they had canine and later the chameleon which sucked but the canine is good so canine had his own series in australia a while back uh where they kind of like regenerated canine hey dungeon studio <laughs> uh, maybe at the end of this i'll give you my theory on and doctor who so this is the uh, the invisible enemy. This is the introduction of K9. It's the very first episode that he was in. And uh, this is the original pilot series that they did for a show called K9 and Company with Elizabeth Sladen. And this did not make it. <laughs> it's often considered to be like uh, not one of the uh, the better ones. And uh, 
difference on this one here. This one is uh, autographed by John Neeson, who did the voice of uh, K-9. And this was a double-sided. Well, there, yeah, these are like the mid to late seventies ones. Uh, but uh, well, I've, as I've been going through here, there's been everything from sixties right up to like the the eighties ones. Uh, this is beneath the surface. This is actually my first box that I ever bought. I think no, the second box that I ever bought from Doctor Who, and it's got Doctor Who. It's the Silurians and the Sea Devils, which are kind of like the monster base ones. Uh, people often mistake them for being aliens but they were actually so the solarians they were around on earth before the, uh before earth the earth was so they kind of just want to get their planet back so uh it has like three stories here again we got like two john pertwee stories doctor and the solarians doctor the sea devils and we got a peter davison one which is not as good called warriors of the deep but still a fun watch <clears throat> They decided to do a complete story arc. Hey, how's it going, Superman? Um, and do like one series of Doctor Who, one whole series, where uh, they'd take six stories and have them like one big like quest, one big mission. Remember when I mentioned early on, I showed you key to, the key, the keys of Marinus, and now that one was like six episodes, and it had kind of an arc. And I mentioned we'd come back to that. Well, now we're coming back to it. Uh, rather than just being six episodes that kind of link together with, with an arc. This is six different serials to link together with an arc, running from like four to six episodes each. Uh, this is the key to time, and it's a special edition of ver version of it. Uh, it has uh, this as the f one of the two Romanas, like the, this is a time lord, another time lord, uh, and uh, it's got the Ribos operation, the Pirate Planet, the Stones of Blood, the Andros Androids of Terra, the Power of Crawl, and the Armageddon Factor. You like the new Doctor Who series? I'm, I'm loving the new series, actually. Uh, this one has, like, uh, this was the last ones that has, uh, that actually has, uh, what's his name? Douglas Adams in it, because he was writing for Doctor Who at the time. Uh, see, he was writing for Doctor Who, and he did, like, uh, you know, Hitch Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and that became really popular around this time. So this is the last series that he actually got to work on. Next up is my very first box set that I bought from Doctor Who, and because I liked Centaurans, and it was a big box set. So this is Centaurans Bread for War, the Centauran collection. Uh, they got some great episodes on here. There's the Time War, which is the very first episode of the Centaurans. The Centauran Experiment, which is a really good one in the uh, first series of, uh, which is series seven of Tom Baker. Um, the Invasion of Time is on here, and so is the Two Doctors, which is a Colin Baker episode. So we got like four discs in this one here. Uh, actually, six discs, because a couple of these are two or two to sets. Next up is the Legacy Collection. Oh, of course, yeah, I'm a huge fan of it. The movie, yeah, the movie. I didn't like the movie that much. Some people love the movie. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the, of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy of the film, but uh, some people love it. I, I like the I like the books and I like the audio and I like the TV series. Uh, Legacy Collection, it has Shada, which was the one that I told you about before. Remember when I mentioned there was a Doctor Who episode that did not... Uh, is there a Doctor Who stop motion animation? No, there's like a, not stop motion animation, there's kind of like a uh, a flash animation one, which is called Scream of Shalka, which originated on, on like, on website. Richard E. Grant actually is in that one. He would go on to be like the great intelligence. I have not seen the WandaVision series teaser yet. There are a ton of Doctor Who novels. Uh, the thing is that for a long time, like you couldn't get Doctor Who on VHS or DVD. Like the only way if you wanted to revisit the stories, because a lot of them didn't come on television again. Uh, and if they did, they'd only they'd come on like during special weeks type of thing. Uh, that you'd be able to get these uh, these target books, and uh, they would like have adaptions of the 
of, of the original Doctor Who uh, novelizations. And of course, sometimes you know, novels can make it look a lot more exciting. Uh, then, th then there are the comic strips that l was in Doctor Who magazine, which I do have a few of. And uh, for the time that, like for instance, when Sylvester McCoy was the last guy to play the Doctor in 1989, there was another Doctor Who until 1996. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, that, uh, and when that, in between that time, Doctor Who magazine was still ongoing. So there were still like, ant like comic book adventures of Sylvester McCoy and Ace running through that uh those uh those stories so this has shada and this has the, the documentary which i probably should watch tonight actually again more than 30 years in the tardis which i think is really cool it's uh kind of cheesy for today but back in the day it was done my favorite doctor is tom baker probably followed by john pertwee <clears throat> next but uh, Next up is the Ace Adventures. I'm a huge fan of Ace. Uh, this is played by Sophie Aldred. And uh, pretty sure that's Sophie Aldred's. Right there. That's the Happiness Patrol, which is a very good episode, actually. And Dragonfire, which has a literal cliffhanger, <clears throat> which you'll understand if you ever watch it. Next up is the Unit Files, and this has uh, Tom Baker and John Pertwee. Uh, it has Invasions of the Dinosaurs, which is fun and cheesy, and the Android Invasion, which really freaked me out when I was a kid, and I'll show you why. I'm sure SNL must have done a Doctor Who one. There's a scene that is like... Uh, John uh, by Benton there's a scene where you kind of like Sarah Jane gets pushed down but it's not really Sarah Jane it's like an android and like the face falls off and you see this trust me it looks creepier when you're watching it as a kid does anybody any autograph on Invasion of Dinosaurs here's Richard Franklin on this one <clears throat> We got two more. It does does look a lot like Westworld. <clears throat> uh, first up is uh, one of my his new regenerations, <clears throat> and the uh, new sorry new, new beginnings. And this one had the uh, from the the last Tom Baker on to the last two Tom Baker episodes and the first Peter Davison one. Uh, they all kind of go together. There's Keeper of Track and Legopolis, and uh, and of course Castrovalva, which is the first Peter Davison one. Um, we get to meet the new master played by Anthony Anley. <laughs> Just download knowledge directly from it. Then we'd be like the hive mind or something like that. So the when Doctor Who, when the sixth Doctor, Colin Baker, was playing Doctor Who, it went off the air for 18 months. And uh, the, at the time, the BBC was trying to get it cancelled. So they brought it back, but they only had 14 episodes. So they scratched what they had originally planned to do for that series of Doctor Who. And they said, you know what? If, we're, if the BBC is putting us on trial and, uh, and are thinking about cancelling us, then let's, let's, put, let's do an, an arc. Let's do a story arc for this entire series. And uh, let's have Doctor Who on trial. And they did, and it came with The Trial of a Time Lord, an amazing Doctor Who serial. Um, there's a lot of like controversy and stuff behind the scenes on this one. I will get into that sometime. Uh, so we got like Trial of the Time Lord 1 to 4. Uh, so there is the Mysterious Planet. Then we get into the, uh, the big one, which is uh, Mind Warp. And it is Terror of the Vervides, and it ends off with the ultimate foe, which introduces the Valyard, who may have been introduced again in Doctor Who. I have a theory about that. <clears throat> so, that can be pretty daunting, can't it? Like trying to figure out what goes with what, 
and like how to buy one disc or how to get like this set and this serial. So recently, BBC has helped us out with that. So imagine if you were starting now. Oh, Ron Atkinson, yeah, he did. He did like him. Oh, you grants on that one too, uh, I think. Uh, so there's an easier way. For years, this was the only way. And I still want to get all the original DVDs of Doc True. That, that's a goal of mine. But they started releasing complete series sets. Oh, yes, yeah, Doc True. It was Palm again in the movie. <clears throat> so, what does that mean exactly? So, they're not releasing them in, in, in order, in any particular order. They're doing some of the more popular ones first. And they've already filmed a lot of features for sets that are coming out. That means that you can get a lot of new Doctor Who, especially no matter if you live in the UK or you live in North America, because there's editions for each. If you can get the UK editions, they're amazing, by the way. Uh, oh, too bad, because I'm getting into this, JR. <laughs> you have a great evening there, though. Come back for this later on. Uh, they started introducing Blu-ray sets. Now, where most of the stuff I just showed you were sets that were kind of done randomly or, or there were like kind of editions that were done on their own, these are complete series. So John per we his fourth season as Doctor Who was put on on Blu-ray. And that includes every episode that's in the fourth season. So The Three Doctors, Carnival of Monsters, Frontier in Space, Plan of the Daleks, The Green Death. Um, with a bunch of sp special features on here. Uh, like insane amount of special features, <laughs> just to say. Oh, that's the one that's at its best, man. <laughs> mm. The early stuff. Yeah, no, so actually, some of these on Amazon.ca, if you want to go check them out, uh, they're having a Doctor Who sale on right now. <clears throat> and, uh, on a classic Doctor Who episode, usually ran around you know 25 minutes or so 20 22 25 minutes uh, the new show of course runs around 45 to 50 minutes uh, the new series does uh, but the classic ones were like because it was would run like four sometimes four to six episodes uh, so what this one has some of the features on this one and that I like when I said like th there's an easy way to get that true these sets are coming out right now um, so there's like a feature length documentary on on like uh, John Pertwee's era of Doctor Who on here <clears throat> and uh, that's actually really really cool it's like an, an 80 minute documentary on his on his role and they have like a bunch of like uh, what they call uh, behind the sofa well yeah with commercials I guess well it will be 30 minutes but you know but no these won't have commercials in them. Uh, they have like uh, and behind the sofa is like there's a show in the UK called Goggle Box and what it basically is, it's like people watching television, right? And uh, like we watch people watch TV. It's, it's actually more fascinating than you'd actually think. They do that with Doctor Who. They have something called Beyond the Sofa. And they have like people watching the, the Doctor Who series, uh, like the different episodes. And it's really cool to see like the reactions and like how they react to it and like the responses to watching it. It's actually extremely cool. <laughs> TVO. Yes, right. It did come on TVO, didn't it? Now, if you buy these in the UK, they don't look like this. Like this will be a big box set, limited edition, with a big booklet on the inside, and fold, it folds out, and it looks amazing. And I have one of those coming, actually. But this is the complete fourth season, John Pertwee. But is that where you start? You could, but most people tend to start here. This is Tom Baker's complete first season. Uh, obviously, Tom Baker is the doctor that everybody knows with the hat and the scarf and some of the best monsters and stories that are available. Uh, this has some of the great Doctor Who episodes. Uh, it has the robot, which does seem like it was written for John Pertwee. It doesn't seem like a Tom Baker type one. But after there, they kind of like it goes right from there. Ark in Space is a really good episode with the uh, bubble rat monster. You'll understand if you see it. The Santaran Experiments are a really good two parter. Genesis of the Daleks, remember the one I told you that was one of the best stories? That's on here. And it ends off with Revenge of the Cybermen, which is an okay story. It's a Cybermen story. Uh, there are a bunch of like new making ofs on here. 
There's a over hour long conversation with, with Tom Baker, uh, an interview with him on here as well. There's a TV movie version of Gents of the Daleks. That's, that's on as well. And that was only 30. And this one is one of the bigger ones. Like this one has like a, yeah, this is like a six to set. And almost every one of these here, by the way, uh, will have a, uh, a this, the last disc could be all special features. So like they used to do these here, like little things in them, but they don't do have them in the newer ones. But uh, this six, for instance, has the Tom Baker one on here as the Gents of the Daleks, what the omnibus, the, the feature length one. And uh, just some really cool, neat stuff. And there's a bunch of features on here. Like, G Genesis the Daleks, by the way, for instance, has the making of the Daleks uh, photo gallery, but doesn't have that Dalek other one that I told you about, that other Dalek feature. And then after that, they put out the very last season of Tom Baker, which is this one right here. And this is the one that would go right into, uh, would have some cool, pretty cool stuff. Starts with the Leisure Hive, Megalus. A, s a full circle, state of decay, and Warriors Gate are the uh, East Space trilogy. You'll, under you'll understand that when you get to it. Uh, the Keeper of Tracking and Legopolis are his two final episodes, and introduces the new master played by Anthony Ainley, who would play the master for years to come. Dressed up like Doctor Who doing the peppermint patty dance. Do you mean the? Uh, I, I like that actually. Uh, that sounds cool. That that person's super cool. So this is a really good season of uh, Doctor Who. This is an eight disc set. As you can see it's, it's much bigger than the last two. Also put out the first Peter Davison one. This is a continuation. This where this one ends. This one begins. <coughs> we get the, it has this has Castrovalva, Florida Doomsday, Kinda, The Visitation, Black Orchid, Earthshock, one of the best episodes that he did, and Time Flight. Uh, great another like eight disc set. For uh, Doc True, the eight disc again is like special features. We have like uh, new making ofs on here. Again, there's a big long uh, over hour long conversation with Peter Davison on here as well. Uh, it's just a great interview. Some amazing stuff. And the latest one that came out was one that you kind of saw on DVD already, but here's the Blu ray edition of it. And I do recommend it. It has, has some of the most fascinating features on any Doc True set. And that is. Colin Baker's season two. You only did two seasons. You did season one and season two, which would be around series 14, I think. No, not series 14. No, that's still Tom Baker era. Series 22? It's hard to remember this. Uh, so it's a six disc set. This has some of the most fascinating behind the scenes features you're ever going to see because basically this was Doc True when it was in turmoil. Uh, you're going to see people stabbing each other. When you watch the featurettes on this, by the way, you're going to hear about people like about BBC trying to cancel the show. And feeling pretty glib about it, <clears throat> you're gonna you're gonna hear from people that turned on other people behind the scenes. You're gonna hear on, about a person that actually turned on and stabbed Colin Baker and the whole cast of Doctor Who in the back with an interview that he did after he left the series. And you will hear the Doctor Who charity song, Doctor in Distress. You might want to look that up. It might make you not want to watch Doctor Who, but you might want to look that up anyway. And it is bloody brilliant. This is incredible. And the features on this set, there is something on here called, what's it called? They actually do one here called the, uh, that I like called The Writer's Room. And, uh, oh, it is a really good documentary in Movie Madness. I'm not joking. It's a really good documentary. And what's neat about The Writer's Room, they usually do like Writer's Room on like some of the later sets talk where they have the writers sit around a table having drinks and talking about like uh, like the show, the episodes that they wrote. In this one here, it's different because instead of talking about the episodes that they wrote, they're talking about the episodes that were originally written for this for this season, but were changed because they threw them all out to do the trial of the Time Lord episodes. So you get here the episodes that that weren't that didn't happen, and some, kind of the episodes that that could have happened in the future if Colin Baker hadn't been fired cer unceremoniously at the end of this season. Yes, he was fired, and he was the only one to not come back for a regeneration. And I just remembered, I got one more Dr. Who set that's pretty kind of cool to show you guys. And uh, although my knee is kind of killing me a bit, I am going to go upstairs and get it, because I want to do the complete Dr. Who collection for you guys. And you guys have stayed for this long, and I'm going to... So this is a thank you for that. You're going to want to see this. I'm not joking when I say this is... A really, really good one.
Hey, there. Sorry, that took a minute longer than I intended it to. Thank you, Ron. That means a lot. Uh, so I, I want to bring this down to this is the Doctor Who magazine. It's still going on today, and uh, for a long time, this is the only way you could find Doctor Who was uh, through there. And they would have like comic book stories with inside this magazine, and that's how you'd see like this. This is the Peter Capaldi era of like comic books stories that you'll see uh, here. And actually, they're pretty well drawn too, as you can tell. But I just want to share. But what one of the what I really want to show you. <clears throat> this is a this is a big deal that I was able to find this. I got it for an amazing price. But this is Doctor Who series one to seven of the new series. So we're gonna break this open now. And this is this was a way to collect new Who. So the one of the first things you can see in here <coughs> is that it has a what's a sonic screwdriver. So the doctor has this thing that's called a sonic screwdriver, and uh, it pretty much does things you know, scans people, opens doors, that type of stuff. So I have like a kind of like a function, more functional with a light and stuff on it. This one here, this is actually universal remote control. So this can, can this can't control your TV. Uh, I'm not joking. With it uses motions to. Uh, the set is the set was super expensive. Uh, not for I, I got this for twenty dollars. Uh, so I, I lucked out, but uh, I think it is now. Like, uh, but all these are out. Like, like all the stuffs out here. Like, this is uh, why I wanted to show. One reason I want to show this was because you mentioned getting the David Tennant Blu-ray. Okay, so this is Chris Freckleston. He was the first of the new guys to play Doctor Who. A lot of people know him from stuff like, uh, oh God, one of my favorite Danny Boyle films. Actually, he's in. Uh, which, which his name escapes me right now, and, and and I love the film, so why can't I remember? So no, you only played Doctor Who for one series, or one season you want to go with. So that is the complete first series of Doctor Who for 2006. That if you want to start with the new stuff, uh, great, great season of Doctor Who. It's Simon Simon Pegg as a, as a part in this one. Uh, you get to meet Doctor, you know, Captain Jack Hartness. Uh, you get to see the return of the Daleks. You find out what Bad Wolf is. You'll see it in every episode, but you won't find out what it is till the end. Again, a great one. So I think it's a three disc set, like uh, on Blu-ray. This was like a five disc set on DVD, but uh, on Blu-ray, obviously, it's a uh, that it also has Doctor Who confidentials, commentaries, interviews, behind the scenes features, and much more. <clears throat> now, when they say that the uh, Doctor Who confidentials were, were cut down versions of them, because uh, like for rights issues type of thing, you can see like Simon Pegg's character right there, actually. So this was series one. Next up, so who came in next? Well, it was David Tennant, the, probably the most famous guy in the, of the new series known for Doctor Who. And he played him for a couple years. So there's David Tennant and Rose. This is the second series of Doctor Who. <clears throat> Again, it'll have like, uh, it has some great episodes, some of the best episodes in Doctor Who altogether. Uh, things like uh, School Reunion, The Girl in the Fireplace, uh, Not Love of Monsters, that's not one of my favorites. <laughs> uh, just some really, really, really good stuff. Uh, we get For me, it would get even better with his second series that he played in Series 3, when uh, Martha came in, in to be his companion. You can see this companion. So this was his first companion, like in the new series, Rose. There's more of a romantic aspect to that, which some people liked and some people really didn't like. My better half was not a huge fan of the romantic aspect of Doctor Who. But Martha was kind of cool. Uh, I have this coat, by the way. <laughs> I'm not joking. I have the coat. I've shown it here on TV, on before. This has probably some of the best episodes of uh, of Doctor Who. Like, yeah. Uh, it has, uh, this has human nature and family of blood, which is considered to be some of the most amazing episodes ever of sci-fi TV. And it's followed off by one of the greatest, creepiest episodes of Doctor Who, that barely has any Doctor Who in it at all, and it's called Blink. And if you've heard about it, then you know what the Weeping Angels are. If you don't, you're in for a treat. So, Movie Madness, if you're buying this, you're getting all of these, by the way, in there. But that's not all. There's more stuff that's on in that Doctor Who Blu-ray set, that Dave Tennant set. Because then you get also get the fourth series of Doctor Who. And the, 
Uh, this is the last full series though, that David Tennant did. And you see Catherine Tate, she's actually a famous British comedian, who I had a huge crush on actually all through the years. Uh, and she's, uh, she's, she's an amazing companion. There's no, they're friends, like, so there's no, uh, <clears throat> oh, Blink was, was horrifying. Uh, and he's barely in it, like, but it's like, you know, uh, that's some of the best writing. This is my favorite set, like, of these series, I guess. Uh, three and four, I kind of go back and forth on, but, uh, like, for the Tenet era. But she's, like, the best companion for him because there's no romance or anything like that. There's nothing. They're just friends. And it's gone back to the way the Doctor was before. And they're, and even kind of sometimes a little bit antagonistic, the way, like, good friends are. They kind of push each other's buttons. <coughs> this has some great, great stories on here as well, by the way. They bring back the Centaurans. The Doctor's Daughter is introduced on here. And uh, I'm not going to lie, that is an amazingly well done uh, episode. And I've wanted to see Jenny come back ever since. But not only that, you're also going to get this in that, ser <coughs> that Tom Baker set as well. You have good taste, Alan. Cats and Trade is gorgeous. <coughs> uh, this, these are the, uh, the complete specials. So after you finished doing the series, they kind of took a year off and they did like just four specials. But they were like kind of like feature length specials. Uh, we're really five specials, a two-parter. So there is the the next Doctor, which is a really, really great episode with David Morrissey, by the way, who played the governor in in the Walking Dead series. He's incredible in this. Uh, Planet of the Dead was a uh, was a really cool one. I think that has the girl uh, from uh, I can't remember her name right now, but she was in like uh, she in the Bionic Woman. She played Bionic Woman in the re in the reboot series. Then there's Waters of Mars, which gives you a very kind of different, darker version of the Doctor. And there's End of Times Part 1 and 2, which brings the Master back. So this, so that. So when somebody buys the, the you know, when you buy the David Tennant one, that's $25, you're getting all of this. You're, you're getting all of these. That's, that's a lot. <coughs> I, have to, I often thought about rebuying it. I already got them, but just have them all in one complete collection on its own type thing. But it's, I can't afford it right now. <clears throat> uh, so next up would be Matt Smith. It would be a doc it would his doctor would harken back to Patrick Troughton. Uh, he would be the youngest actor to ever play Doctor Who, and he would do it amazingly. And he would bring back bow ties because bow ties are cool. There he is, and there of course is the no, not that not that uh, Bonnie White Bonnie Bonnie Wom, the other Bonnie Wom that came on afterwards. Oh yeah, def definitely. You, you'll, you'll thank me for it, I think, Movie Madness. I think you'll like it. Let me know if you do, by the way. Because at the worst case scenario, at $25, that thing's going to go up in price again, and you flip, and you can flip it if you want, but I don't think you will. Because <clears throat> the features, there's a lot, a lot of features and commentary and stuff on there too, by the way. So this is, and I'm letting you guys see a good good picture of Amy right there, because you guys tend, tend to like Amy. <coughs> and then there is the sixth series of Doctor Who. This is the end of Amy's, like Ron and Doctor Who and Rory, and the start of Clara, the impossible girl. And Matt Smith played him for one more series, and that is this one right here, the complete seventh series of Doctor Who. Even though Amy is only like in like a kind of a, a one scene of this one, they actually put her on the cover. Uh, <coughs> okay. Uh, but like it's definitely this is Jenna Coleman <laughs> season man. and then it would be taken over after that by uh, Peter Capaldi who's one I showed you before <laughs> but that's not all on the set there also has some like uh, a bonus disc as you can see the three doctors right there it has the Brits list doctors who ultimate list of lists the best of the Christmas specials uh, and doctor with the prom which is kind of music like on a concert that they did so that's the Matt Smith version of Doctor with the Proms. Also in this one here, just to give you... I've been watching Doctor Who since about series 13. Uh, I was very young when I started watching it. I was, but but I, I probably started around midway through series 13, which is probably at 73 or 74. So I was like really young. So about 74. Uh, so I was around 1974. I was, around, I was really young when I started watching it. And that's series 14 of uh, Tom Baker. This is the uh, IDW. Unfortunately, mine got a little 
Jagged. This is the idea of a comic book. Oh, actually, the twin doctor is is David Tennant. <clears throat> uh, David Tennant, like in the in one of the series of David Tennant, uh, he goes to regenerate because he gets hit by Dalek, and uh, his hand got cut off earlier, and his hand kind of came back, right? So he has his hand, his own hand basically, and it he regenerates another copy of him into his into a, his disembodied hand. Got to see it to really understand it, but it's cool. It also has this as well, which I will show you. Oh yeah, like right now, uh, Jodie Whittaker is playing the Doctor, <clears throat> and uh, someone else as well. So this is Chris Eccleston, David Tennant, Matt Smith. These are some art cards that were done for the series, for the especially for this box set. I was very proud to get this box set, by the way. <clears throat> I'm a huge Doctor Who fan. Um, obviously, as you guys know by now, if you didn't before. So I want to give my theory on the on a, one of the recent episodes of Doctor Who. So if you're not caught up with uh, Doctor Who right now, I'm getting into spoiler territory for the new series. But if you haven't started watching it at all, you probably, well, probably won't matter because you may have it forgotten by then. <coughs> so, in a recent episode of Doctor Who, who here still watches Doctor Who? Who watches New Who? Anybody at all? Like still watching it right now? Because I know somebody here said that J Jody Whitaker was one of their favorites. <clears throat> Doctor Who has been a roller coaster this season. Uh, w like a real roller coaster of like insanity going on. In one of the latest episodes of the, of the Doctor Who series, Jody Whitaker, she's the Doctor now, uh, Oh really? I'm look like played by mass. I got kids. I got I gotta, re gotta rewatch this stuff. <clears throat> so uh, she meets these these people and the uh, Jadun, if like who were sh introduced in season three, like their series three uh, of the Tenant era. Um, they come down and they're looking for this uh, for for this uh, fugitive. <clears throat> so eventually, they find out. That the uh, fugitive is actually uh, is this girl, and she doesn't know why she has no, she she the the doctor scans her. She seems human. Uh, nothing seems off about her. She says, "No, this is where I lived. My parents lived in this lighthouse. They're buried in the back there. There's there's a grave. There's a gravestone. No, nothing's not normal about me." <laughs> and the Jadun come to take her on, and she literally all of a sudden hits in this mode where she kind of like beats the crap out of him. So the doctor notices something off about the tombstone and she scans it and she realizes that there's no human life forms underneath there. In fact, there's no life forms at all. At this point, back in the lighthouse, <laughs> she's been told uh, to break the glass on her phone. <laughs> she got, gets a message that says, break the glass. And she does. She hits this button <clears throat> and breaks the glass. And all of a sudden, this stuff comes out and goes inside of her, this, this energy. Now, if you're a Doctor Who fan, you've seen it before, because in Series 3, uh, the Doctor at one point decides to make himself, like, to, make, to hide from these aliens, decides to make himself human. And actually, when he does that, he forgets. It changes his physiology, like, it changes him to, to be like he's human, and he makes, it, makes him forget exactly who he was. So he's like living as a human. So this girl scanned as human because like that, there's something that's called a chameleon arc that masks who she actually is. <clears throat> so who is she? Well, the only people that can do that are time lords. So the doctor <laughs> digs up <coughs> the grave <coughs> and finds, poking out of it, a TARDIS. The doctor flies in and a time machine called the TARDIS, time or of dimensions of space. But this TARDIS, just like the Doctor's TARDIS, is a police box, which 
really confuses the doctor. And the girl turns around, and now she's wearing this kind of neat like outfit, and, uh, and you know she's not from around here type of thing. And she says, hi. I said, you're probably a bit confused right now. Nice to meet you. I'm the doctor. But neither one of them, the doctor has been regenerated many times, but neither one of them can remember the other person. And if the doctor is a time traveler, he remembers all his re regenerations. Uh, so that's <clears throat> what's going on now in Doctor Who. It's kind of like the bit, one of the big storylines. And it's actually utterly fascinating. It's got people excited about Doctor Who again. <clears throat> so we got two people, one that's we, a doctor that we've been following for the last year and a half, and now there's this other doctor that they've said that's it's not a parallel dimension. This is actually a doctor, uh, but I'm not sure. Uh, it's it's interesting to see where it goes from here. Anyway, I thought that was a really cool storyline that's going on right now in Doctor Who, uh, and uh, it's made people like get excited about Doctor Who again. People are kind of wondering who she actually is, if she is Doctor Who, where she fits in the timeline. <clears throat> and how they're going to work that in. Uh, I think it's pretty It's pretty neat. Some people said she can't be before the first Doctor because when the TARDIS, the TARDIS, is, the ship that the Doctor goes in is called a TARDIS. <clears throat> when he, when you get the ship, it looks like a cylinder. It looks like cylindrical. But it has a chameleon circuit on it. And when you land on a planet, <clears throat> then it makes itself look like something within that planet. So since he landed in 1960s London, it looks like a police box, but his commune circuit broke so that it can't change shape. It always looks like a police box. <clears throat> so there's a lot of stuff in there. And that's confusing for anybody that's not watching Doctor Who right now, but I just wanted to put that out there. So it's a good time for uh, Doctor Who. Movie Madness, let me know if you get that David Tennant set and what you think of it. I'm really curious <coughs> to find out your thoughts on, on Doctor Who, because David Tennant was probably one of the bigger actors that came in Doctor Who as well. He went on to do a lot of movies and TV shows, and he's become extremely famous and one of the go-to guys. <clears throat> like he started out like as a romantic lead in, in shows like Casanova, and of course as like uh, kind of the evil guy in movies like Secret Smile. But uh, David Tennant is definitely one of the better actors. Uh, Peter Capaldi, amazing actor, uh, st you know, was probably the, one of the more famous actors that played Doctor Who. Be like, like he was famous before Doctor Who. Hey, welcome, Adam. You coming in at the end, man? <clears throat> I went through my entire Doctor Who series, so if you like Doctor Who, check this video out afterwards. So there you go. I have no idea how I'm going to make it up those stairs again. I hope I didn't look too bad limping up the stairs a minute ago when I went to get this set right here. <clears throat> you like Blake 7 better? Well, for you, really quick. Hold on. I on BBC, when they didn't, when they stopped showing Doctor Who, one of two things replaced Doctor Who. It was either Red Dwarf or a show called Blake 7. And since it's a small series that only lasted four seasons, <clears throat> here they are. Hey, David. Hey, Dave. All four seasons of the extremely underrated series Blake 7. He wasn't Terminator Genesis. That's the lead actress there. I actually found these at a, uh, <coughs> at a Salvation Army store. Which blows my mind. I have not used the vinegar cinnamon code yet. Hopefully it'll last for a while. <coughs> my <coughs> oldest uh, daughter, her birthday... Well, that's why my daughter, her birthday was, was recently. She's 25. I have a 25-year-old now. Anyway, <coughs> thank you so much for coming in tonight. Doctor Who was something that I really love and adore. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. We've got to look through all my classic episodes of Doctor series of Doctor Who, all my new Doctor Who, like Blu-rays, 
<clears throat> you got you even got to see because because Adam came in at the end. You got to see my my Blake Seven stuff and just give you an idea of the Blake Seven sets what they're like in the inside. I just scoot one open really quickly. So. <clears throat> oh yeah, well Salvation all Salvation Arms are all over Canada. It's like the. Well, there you go. I am Aaron. This is my movie library. Thank you so much for joining me here. <clears throat> and uh, you are the call to cinema. And you guys, you guys rock. Have a great evening. Check out some Doctor Who. And Alan, yes, we do have Best Buy here in Canada. Future Shop is better, though. And that one, unfortunately, we don't have anymore. I used to work at Future Shop, and I used to work at Best Buy too, actually. Have a great evening.